So you sit around all day, you don't work, you don't do anything, you're bored. Somehow you get out to find drugs. This is file 221335FY, People versus Jacob Lewis Hovarder. Mr. Hovarder is here with his attorney, Rhonda Ives. This began as a two count felony complaint for possession of methamphetamine as a second or subsequent complaint of offense, which is a 20 year felony. It was reduced to a misdemeanor charge of use of methamphetamine. But it never really was exactly that. Uh, Mr. Hovarder was intoxicated with a 0 0.2 blood alcohol level from drinking vodka. What this really was, was an alcohol incident akin to a disorderly person. He had a straw with a trace amount of methamphetamine in it, which resulted in the methamphetamine charge. And he was placed on a probation. Uh, he was given, I think, 60 days credit, 11, and released. We had a subsequent probation violation. He did four more days, so I think he's got 15 days credit. We had a couple of probation violation hearings during the course of this probation, which began in August of 2022. And in July of last summer, 2023, the defendant went into the Odyssey House inpatient treatment facility. And I believe he was there until December 21st altogether, which would be 163 days. Um, he struggled, he's relapsed, he's made some strides, he's back slid. Uh, and this wasn't so much a punishment case as we were trying to do some help, try to get his life turned around a little bit. Uh, as Daniel says in the uh, status report, um, Jacob has always been polite, respectful, always wears a tie. Uh, he's, he falls back on his disability, but he's no dumb dumb. He's smarter than he gives himself credit. I think intelligence and judgment and perhaps mental illness or autism may be other things, but they don't get confused with respectfulness and intelligence. Um, now, this is a hearing regarding the probation violation and that he failed, I gotta find the petition. I have trouble. No, I think he admitted. Did he admit? Mm -hmm. Is this the date for the sentence? Yes, he admitted uh, using meth the weekend. Yes, on, on the 8th. Um, so I set this for sentencing and set a half an hour. Uh, let me quote from Daniel's report, which is very telling. Daniel spent a lot of time on this particular defendant. Sometimes we can't save you from yourself. The defendant reports he is respectful and always has been. The issue, he does not want to change. Not really. In the past and for much of this probation, he refuses to really address the issues he needed in order to make long lasting change. Uh, and so maybe we can't save you from yourself. 
So I think Daniel believes that we've taken you about as far as we can in this probation. You did make a pretty good effort at Odyssey House. You had to leave your home, leave your town, get into their strict program. You called a couple times and said, let me come home. And Daniel said, no. And then finally, on December 21st, just before Christmas, I think you came back. So now you're back in the environment where you got in trouble with a lot of the same bad influences and lazy lifestyle that you had. So essentially, Daniel, as I understand it, you're recommending we simply discharge him from probation and put him on a payment plan to pay the money that he owes. Is that correct? Uh, yes. And then I didn't know if the court, if the court wanted to sanction him for his last and middle the weekend before that would be appropriate, obviously, but otherwise we really can't take this any further than we've already done. Well, you put a lot of work into this. You and I have probably had 15 conversations about Mr. Hobarter because we felt it was worth saving. But I tend to agree with you. We've taken this, at least at this time, about as far as we can. Rhonda, what's your position? Well, and, and speaking with my client, Your Honor, you know, addiction is one of those things that um, once you're addicted, it, it kind of has you. You don't have it until you, um, you know, are able to get a hold of it. I think that Mr. Ovarder has continually struggled. Um, and I think it's kind of had him by the, short tails for a long time. And I think that he has um, tried to put diligent efforts to, to grasp a hold of that addiction problem. But I think he's had, he's had failures. Um, he admits he's had failures, uh, but I don't think he's not wanted to try. Um, I think just even the AA um, meetings that he goes to and always going to celebrate, re celebrate every, recovery on every Sunday. I'm getting involved in a group. So every Sunday he's involved in celebrating. Instead just at Gross Point, uh, heading west out of town on US 12, off to the right. So he, I mean, I feel like he, when when I talk to him, he has the willpower to to make changes and go to treatment, and he knows what he has to do to maintain this sober lifestyle. I just think. It gets the best of him once in a while, Your Honor. I think sometimes it's beyond his own control um, because I don't see an intentional flagrant disrespect for the court's order. I think it's more of it, uh, an addiction that he's had a hard time overcoming. And I don't know what you do about that. I mean, I suppose you could give him a weekend in jail or 30 days in jail or give him some jail time. But I really think that he knows, I think he knows what he has to do. He just has to, you know, mind over matter. If you could, do you want to say? I got to be honest with my recovery. I don't, I don't like to talk about it really. Just, no, but let me ask you some just simple questions. What do you do all day? See, that's my problem. I need to do so much. Just sit there, listen to music, go on the computer. Uh, I'm trying to get back in the clubhouse. I've talked to Betsy about it. And they uh, told me that I could, uh, I got the okay from Betsy and uh, I went there one day and they're like, well, due to your, uh, I guess, to your diagnosis, I couldn't come back, but maybe the former director could override that. And I'm still waiting on a call for that. I did call. Well, I thought Clubhouse would be a good thing for you. That's what I'm, it did, it was. Uh, also, not trying to interrupt you, also, when I was doing this year and a half probation, I was only getting tested twice a week, and that made me want to use sometimes. Want to step I'm, between the raindrops? Yes, yes, but three times, I have, that's major thing, yeah, well, being honest about that. The last thing, the absolute last thing you need in your life is methamphetamine. Uh, for one thing, you don't have very much money. For another, it is contraindicated to any medication that you're taking. It compromises the 
functionality of your brain affects your emotions, takes all the dopamine out of your brain, leaves you as a shell of a person. And you have enough struggles without medicating yourself with methamphetamine. Alcohol is one thing, marijuana is another, but um, that's going from like single A baseball to the major leagues. It's a whole nother uh, yeah. step. So you sit around all day, you don't work, you don't do anything, you're bored. Somehow you get out to find drugs. I or get yourself in trouble and you need something to occupy your time go ahead i've been going to meetings uh twice a week how do you then, get there well my mom lets me uh drive to and from all right and do you have a license of course i do I okay once it's out 16 yes all right good um well that's something what about some normality what about a job uh, i really i would like to it's just i'm going to need help in that process even a simple job like working at mcdonald's or being a rocket scientist or something janitorial i did like cleaning i did work because yeah. um, you're physically okay yeah you've got attention issues oh. and um, this that sort of thing Tell me what you liked about Odyssey House, and then tell me what you didn't like about it. It was structured, very structured. So it gave you something, and Daniel and I talked about that, <laughs> that you liked the structure. It gave you something to do, a time to do it, somewhere to be, uh, people to talk to. All right. What didn't you like about it? Uh, the structure. <laughs> well... It was kind of a little like boot camp in a way. Well, not, it was strict rehab. Uh, you'd have to wake up at 5.30, 5.30 in the morning, Monday through Friday, uh, make your bed, all that stuff, then have breakfast. That's a bitch. Have, I get up at 5.15 every day, Monday have classes, through Friday, and make my bed. Have classes. We have classes all through the day. Uh, also... I only get one cup of coffee a day, but yeah, but there's certain levels. When you're level three, you could be, you can drink. You get more privilege. Yes, yes, that's how it is. And I got to level two. I was so close to level two, but I screwed up when I was being level two. And I was really, really close. And then that's what screwed me over. And that's when I'm like, screw this. I mean, it, it, level two was hard. I was like, I, I had to go from place to place helping people. Like I was, I was like a, they tell me to go get things in the facility. I would have to go get things. I was always moving around constantly, constantly. And uh, when, let's say, if you're a CAI, you're a candidate, in, uh, including yourself, you you had to walk with three other people besides your. Uh, you had to walk with three other people besides other people or uh you'll get two hours two hours meaning uh that you'd have to do work and all that stuff like you'd have to be in it and at least with four people because let's say if you do something and there's someone with you they can hold you accountable and all that which stuff. was kind of how you got sideways yeah another guy was doing something yeah. he wasn't supposed to be doing yeah and, and even the even the counselors the facilitators said i shouldn't have went on that appointment but i wanted to get out of the house you're always in that house or that facility and wanted to get out but i was doing appointments though but it was in the it was in the morning and afternoons not it was at night what's your plan going forward i really want to get disability and I've been waiting for Well, that. there was even discussion of that. Right now, you don't have any income. That's a two-edged sword. If you get disability, you get income each month, but it means you're never going to work for the rest of your life. Um, and that's not my call to make. 
but you didn't even get that. So Daniel, you and you discussed that with him during the terms of probation. Yes, I did. What's right. the status of that, Mr. Well, Reporter? Well, he was in a uh, re reapplying for that, and most people do get turned down the first time. Yeah, uh, I'm uh, right now. Uh, yeah, I did get denied, but uh, I filed an appeal, and I'm still waiting on the appeal case for the mail to come in. So I know if there's a decision or not. I'm still waiting for the decision. All right. The second, uh, when I appealed it, uh, this time uh, it's an unbiased case. And I've got unbiased people who are going to be looking at my claim. All that, so. My fear is that you're going to step on a few more landmines before you're done. And you're going to be with somebody you shouldn't be with in the wrong place at the wrong time. And I'm not going to try to do this again. This takes a lot of emotional capital from me and from your PO. Um, I'm just going to put you in jail. Okay. Heaven forbid, if you end up with a felony charge, maybe they could try something. Okay. I wish I could get you back into clubhouse. I really because that is a positive thing. We've had some good successes and they've got a really good director right now. And that program's as good as it's ever been in a long time. Daniel, right. let's break down what he owes us. <clears throat> We've paid $617 is the last that I have. Um, and then I have a O of three thirty eight through Jan through January, so I'd be another forty bucks on top of that. But see what my original order was. So for be being drunk in the middle of the street. You got 15 days in jail. That's what actually this really was. It isn't really a meth case, although you had struggled with addiction. So we tried to get in and accomplish something. Um, where's my judgment? Most of that, there was zero fine, $75 crime victims rights fee, $50 state minimum fee and a $150 attorney fee. The rest of it was probation oversight. So I'm gonna order two days jail for the probation violation, credit two. She'll end up credit zero, excuse me. You're going to jail for two days. I can't just ignore that, but I'm otherwise gonna give you a successful discharge from probation. I'm also gonna excuse the balance of the probation oversight fee. You don't owe me any money. Although Daniel did yeoman duty in this. <laughs> My fear is before the 4th of July, you're gonna be back in here for some. I kind of self-sabotage myself. And so, way. and you and I've discussed that. Yes, we have. Um, I was so pleased with how you were doing and I thought Odyssey House was a great thing and you self-sabotage. Now, this is a good start. Did you get that back to him? You need to stay plugged into that. You need to stay on your, whatever your medications are. You need to stay connected with community mental health. Okay. I don't know whether disability is the right answer. I'd like to see you have some sort of meaningful employment, but I've dragged you as far down the road as I can. Um, you have made an effort, so I'm not gonna just revoke it, but you owe me two days in jail for multiple uh, controlled substance uses. Mm -hmm. And I'm refusing or excusing the rest of the fine. I hope when I said, I'm probably gonna see you by July, you're nodding your head. Don't agree with me, oh, no, no. disagree with me. I don't want to see you by July or Valentine's Day or 
uh, whatever day it is, but that's my fear. Uh, anyway, two days it seems like almost counterproductive, but I can't ignore the dilutes and the positive tests. All right, Jacob, I've washed my hands. I wish you the best. I hope I don't see you in a few weeks or months. Um, I hope you either figure out whether to go to work or get your disability, but uh, I'd rather think good things are going to happen rather than bad. All Just right. Just to you can serve those now, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Arnie. Thank you. Thank you. Is Ms. Jewell here? Yes. Can I go check? Yes, one Oh, my God.